day two for arm recognition editorial team at AUSA 2019, the Association of United States Army Defense Division in Washington, D.C., United States. Today we'll focus our video coverage to the main programs of the U.S. Army, including the infantry squad vehicle, the new generation of vehicles for the infantry, the infantry squad weapon system, a new weapon 6.8 mm caliber, small arms, including assault rifle and machine gun, and also a new Shorat air defense system and the light tank programs for U.S. Army. So Elaine, well, first of all, welcome to the AM General booth. And what you see behind me here is the AM General Brutus. It's a 155 millimeter hybrid soft recoil self-propelled howitzer system. Priorities is increasing the range of artillery fires. So our approach to it is to make artillery more mobile, more lethal, and more survivable. So the Brutus 155 that you see here behind me accomplishes all those three things. So first of all, you can see that it's a very light, medium truck. The overall modifications were very straightforward. Some small outriggers for stability. So the recoil mechanism basically takes the 777 barrel, we make some minor modifications to insert it into the cradle, we mount it to the FMTV, and, and you get the same capabilities in terms of fire rates as the M777, now you add the additional mobility for shoot and scoot. So what you see here is an iteration of the Humvee Hawkeye that we first launched three years ago at AUSA, and today what you have behind me is the 105 Humvee Hawkeye with its support truck. So as you can see by the Gladiator that is behind me, the XMT, we've looked at a couple of key features to make it even more mobile than it already is. So we changed out the tires to a larger tire size. We added beat lock rims to, to, to improve the off-road mobility. And also we changed out the interior in, in terms of the seating. So, so the stock seats are really nice, they're very comfortable, but when you go into a long-term, long-range long military operation, you really want to look at upfitting the interior with a military-type interior that the soldiers are more used to and accustomed to uh, operating in. And what you see behind me here is the XLT3. It is our ultra-light tactical vehicle comes in at about 4,600 pounds GVW, and it's really meant for special forces operations where the operator needs to get in and out very quickly, air transportable by helicopter, airdrop. So the XLT3 fits very nicely on the ultra light range of our product offering. We have continued to develop and refine the NXT360 based on customer feedback internationally. So as we launched it several years ago at Eurus Satori, the NXT 360 is a, is a 15,500 pound GVW vehicle with greater protection levels, higher mobility, better fuel economy, and we're very excited to look towards the Eurus Satori 2020, and we will bring uh, to Paris updated version of the NXT 360 uh, based on what we've developed over the last two years. So what you see here is, uh, it's called Tacticam by Armorworks. So this tactical camouflage system helps reduce the infrared signature and the overall silhouette of the vehicle at about a thousand meters out. So some of the new features of the Carl Gustav system, there is the Picatinny rail um, to, enable, to enhance the handling of the system for the back support and the front grip. It has a longer handle in, to make it easier to carry and hand over to other colleagues. There is joystick up here to operate an uh, advanced sight like this FCS-13 from Aimpoint. Previously our weapons came with um, a normal scope. This is a fully fledged red dot sight with a laser rangefinder in, in, in included. 
so it uh, measures the range to the target. It also has facilities to engage moving targets at range. This can be used with night vision goggles, so it, it works day or night. We got 11 different types of combat ammunition, and we got four different types of training ammunition. So <coughs> it ranges from anti-armor, where we have uh, fully fledged anti-tank ammunition with precursor and, and the follow through charge, uh, but also for engaging armored vehicles. We even have one which is designed to be fired from confined space. So you can fire from in, within the building to a target outside. It's a, it's a fully confined space capable round. Uh, we also have anti-structure rounds, uh, like the uh, multi-target round, which has two warheads. We have uh, anti-structure munition, which has one warhead, and a dual purpose munition, which can be fired against either armored vehicles or buildings. And then there are ammunition for, for soft targets as well. We can all use it against almost all targets that the infantry will come up against on the battlefield. So the infantry equipped with Carl Gustav is a formidable force. Normally, you could say that the minimum engagement distance is 30 meters. Then the maximum distance goes out that the, the shortest round that we have is about 100 meters. And the furthest out you can get with our rounds is about 1500 meters now. We're working together with Raytheon, we're working on a guided round, which will take the range out to 3000 meters. Well, the Carl Gustav is a proven, capable weapon system uh, that will provide any infantry unit with superior and overmatching firepower to any enemy that they will engage. And Saab is happy to provide that capability. Welcome to AUSA 2019. Uh, my name is Paul. I'm with Sig Sauer. So what we have in front of us today uh, are the two submission guns that we have for Next Gen Squad Weapon Program, as well as the ammunition. So really what I would like to start with is the ammunition. The ammunition is what is key to the program. That is the commonality between both platforms. Uh, the MCX Spear is our magazine-fed submission, and the MG 6.8 is our belt-fed submission. So the, the program really starts out with the projectile. It all comes down to the projectile. Uh, that's the business end. That's what uh, the Army's trying to achieve, uh, is deliver this projectile downrange with a known effective rate. So if you look at the, the US program and the world that's following suit, everyone's about enhanced lethality. So standoff distance, overmatch capabilities. So it's all about keeping your military safe at a safe distance to an engaging enemy to identify that enemy uh, and engage them before they become a threat. So we'll start with the M6 Spear. It's your typical M4 platform, right? If you look at this from the outside envelope, it really doesn't look much different than any other assault rifle that's on the market today. Uh, a lot of the things that we had to do to the gun are internal to the weapon, and we left the outside of the weapon so that soldiers that already know AR-type platforms can transition into this weapon easily. So AR style controls, right? AR style grip and AR style uh, stock controls. We go to full auto and then semi. Uh, we also incorporated a side charging handle into this weapon system. Again, it's transitioning infantrymen to belt fed soldiers. Belt fed soldiers are comfortable with an infantryman gun. So the side charging handle is extremely nice. It keeps you on target. It keeps your trigger hand free to do the, the business end of things while you manipulate the weapon with your offhand. So this is our machine gun, this is our belt-fed submission. Uh, feeds from starter belts that you can have in 50 or 100. And again, it's M-Force type controls. It's controls that a soldier's used to using on his infantry uh, weapon that is now transferable to a belt-fed weapon. So our magazines load simply like any other, any other magazine. It would click in, you take your starter belt, you jam it in the feed tray, and you're ready to go to battle. So. Here we have our submission for, for belt-fed machine gun. Again, side charging handle, right? It detents to the outward position. You charge it when you return, non-reciprocating. When you return the charging handle to the forward position, you actually get rid of that catch point. So we have a spring detented closed and detented out. Gives you nice options. We kept the, uh, the five position extendable stock, right? Also side folding. Uh, we have our 45 degree mounts on this, again a uh, requirement that we were needed to submit the guns with. Uh, 
but our iron sights can either mount on these 45 degrees or they can mount on a continuous Picatinny rail. So we can load this with our side folding uh, feet cover. We can actually load this with the feet cover down. No need to lift the cover to load the weapon. So if you're in a threat situation, you've, you've fired out your, your ammo and you need to change, you would simply release the magazine, install a new magazine, and jam the belt in and back up and running. No need to come up from cover, lift the cover, look, check, sweep links anymore. My name is Pat Gallagher with Spectre Group US. Spectre Group UK is a British company that manufactures and is involved in commercial satellite business. It manufactures a device which is laid out here that converts UHF and VHF radio signals into a commercial satellite link. That link allows different radios that normally cannot talk to each other to now communicate. Because the system is working under a satellite of a spot beam in diameter of 600 miles, it allows the users to then move beyond line of sight and to, to talk to each other on different radios and do it while they're moving. Military tactical military satellites do not allow communications on the move. This system allows that to occur. The different boxes you see here in front of you are the conversion devices that convert to different radio signals, depending on which radio it is, UHF or a VHF system, etc. Antennas or vehicle antennas, man pack antennas, and then it also comes with various power sources to use different batteries, or it can be hardwired into a vehicle, or you can just plug it into an outlet in the wall at 110 or 220. We have solutions that can be wired into vehicles and then also carried by the individual person. The different devices have flanges on them to mount to vehicles or the cooling things from a man pack. Slingshot is currently used in 20 different countries around the world. The largest user, single user, is the United States Special Operations Command, is currently using the system. It helps them extend their tactical network, but it also allows them to talk to their coalition counterparts in NATO while they're working in theater uh, in Afghanistan, Iraq, and Syria. The system has been in use for five to six years, so the U.S. Special Operations Command continues to utilize more and more of the system and reorder systems that are either damaged in combat or have worn out from overuse, etc. First of all, I'd like to extend a warm welcome to the Army Recognition Crew over at AUSA 2019. My name is Sally Stefova Valiant and I'm the Vice President of Sales and Marketing for International Armor Group. We're one of the largest privately owned armor vehicle manufacturers in the world and we specialize in uh, both commercial and tactical armored vehicles. We have several facilities worldwide, um, one of our uh, obviously here in the States in St. Augustine, Florida. We've got another facility in Europe and in the Middle East as well. Um, the vehicle that we have here today is one of our flagship products, is the Guardian Armor Personnel Carrion. I would like to now draw your attention to the vehicle dashboard. As you can see, this specific unit is in right-hand drive, um, obviously intended for countries such as Bangladesh, Pakistan, um, UK that operate on the other side of the road. Uh, the Guardian is available in both left-hand drive and right-hand drive, but this is something that we have introduced in the market in the last couple of years. International Armor Group is known for its technological know-how and investments in R&D, and as such, we're able to do all these left-hand drive to right-hand drive conversions in-house. Uh, we also offer the Guardian APC with several different suspension systems, uh, of course the standard coil and leaf spring suspension that we have today, as well as it's, um, it's also available in uh, rear shock and coil suspension um, configuration, and recently we have added an independent suspension system which also has the possibility of adding a central tire um, inflation system to the vehicle. There are multiple features and options available on the Guardian APC, uh, so I would encourage your viewers to uh, 
uh, visit our website at www.interarmored.com to learn more about this product or IAG or um, our diverse capabilities and product range.